Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, tonight, whenever you happen to see this, I would like to offer the mid-November elemental relationship reading for the elemental energy of air. If you're interested as to why I read for the elements instead of the zodiac, there's a link to a video in the description. Uh, and if you've never had your charts um, <laughs> done, you can always check. There's a link to a natal chart uh, in the description. It's really super cool. It's not affiliated or anything like that, but it's a cool link. It gives you the 12 uh, houses with all the little planets and symbols and lines and etc. <laughs> um, and then it gives you a 10 to 20 page, depending on what's in the uh, chart uh, description of what all that means. It's, I mean, it's general, but it does hitch, hit the person that you're when you get it it's really super accurate for that which i do appreciate i go through mine quite frequently because it's absolutely amazing how much is in there sometimes and you'll get something different almost every time you go through it it's like i said it's an interesting document uh, if you're interested in any of the cards i'm using they're linked in the description other than that we'll get started with our reading um, i read for the singles first and then we'll read for the couples within the element we look at the chakra that is the most dominant, which is usually where your energy or your focus is. And then we will pull some tarot cards to kind of clarify that just to get us a little more information. So, air singles, we have number six, fear. And it looks like we got some Kali energy going on here. I won't hold this too close to the camera. <laughs> um, with Kali energy, what I'm getting from this one is there's almost like there's a fear to express yourself, or air singles. I'm getting this impression that there's this block, like you're not really sure what to do. Well, when Kali comes in, it's saying, we're going to clear out all that. It's going to be, peel that band-aid off, we're going to just tear it off fast, we're not going to play around anymore. It's time to really step into who you are. It's going to be uncomfortable is what they're saying, but it's definitely going to be worth it. We're talking with the root chakra here, and when we are dealing with the root chakra, this is about this physical forms personal survival it's our connection to the planet it's really probably out of the chakras it's the most selfish one because its focus is the survival of this thing this body here <laughs> so when we look at it from that perspective there could be some fear of stepping out of our comfort zones there could be some fear of expanding our horizons fear of what if we get hurt emotionally usually um but they're they're saying that this is, with Kali coming in, it's saying the fear needs to be put to bed. You have basically a warrior guardian coming up saying, you don't have anything to be worried about. Just step out. You might not make it on the first try. You might not ask that person and they reject you the first, you know, that person might reject you. But that's fine. How else do you grow if you don't, you know, push against those boundaries a little bit? So let's see what the book has to say. Um, it is the goddess Kali. It, she is one of the many incarnations of the divine feminine energy. She is associated with what, for most people, is the biggest fear of death. With her tongue sticking out, her hair wild in disarray, she looks angry and appears demonic. And at other times, she also appears beautiful and showers her devotees with gifts of compassion. The sword she uses to sever the ego, destroys the demons, can inspire, us, inspire in us fear, protects us against it, or dissolves it. Her mala of skulls which is her necklace. You can't quite see it because I don't want to get too close to the screen because of what's on the picture. <laughs> um, it's a basically a rosary. Shows her disinterest in the outside beauty and disdain for pride. So, again, that pride, that ego that's stopping you from stepping out and doing something different, she's going to be like, yep, we're done here. <laughs> uh, keywords are lack of awareness, insecurity, fear, stress, getting caught in others' demands or expectations, and then shadows of deception so there's this illusion that i'm hearing is also blocking that you you feel you're not good enough you feel that you're not in the same league as that person like they're such a 10 and i'm such a two kali's like no that's not actually true that other person feels the same way that you do you're both high way higher up on the scale than you, you think of yourselves and so there's this energy of illusions are not benefiting you right now uh air you you like the truth you want things to be cut away you want clarity 
uh, unless the ego's rising and then you like uh, <laughs> the term airhead applies but when you get a hold of that ego and you learn to use it as a tool and not let it dominate then you can actually step into your authority when you look at the bottom of this card Kali's standing on what you could call the ego she's like enough is enough we're not doing this anymore you will learn your position and that's what she's bringing forward and we're focusing the energy with air on the root chakra so this is kind of a a core thing for you this is one of those you don't talk about it you can be the most charming person when you're out in the midst of your friends but when you're at home these doubts kind of come forward because they're very very close to who you are as a person and what I'm hearing from this one is those things are very real for you in this moment but how do you conquer fear you either have to face it or you have to learn how to subvert it <laughs> and that's what I'm hearing with this for now your first tarot is the four of autumn manage your resources wisely achieve balance in how you spend and save help those who are less fortunate one of the better ways to get out of your head get out of this thought pattern of well it's weird phrasing poor poor pitiful me uh, is to do something for someone else so instead of constantly on the hunt well if I'm gonna go out socializing I need to be looking is there someone I can date is there something this or something that go out to the soup kitchen and volunteer go out to help coach uh, little little league fill-in-the-blank sport go out and help at like the old folks home uh, working with a painting group or something like that do something that gets you out of your bubble gets you out of yourself because when you distract your uh, monkey mind which is attached to your root chakra it allows you to see that there's a lot more going on that's benefiting you than there is negative so <clears throat> excuse me that's what the four of autumn is saying is learn how to balance those things those energies because right now what I'm hearing is this I don't want to step out and stand out energy is rising to the surface it's because there's an imbalance that's not being maintained so when you start to step out of that bubble and you do these more charitable works get yourself distracted from thinking about your personal situation you can actually improve the situation just by not letting the ego have that much domain your Oh, this is amazing your, your second card is number 12 in the major arcana so this is a huge life lesson this goes beyond just the month we're in and it is the awakening in the traditional tarot this would be the hanged man change the way you're looking at a situation embrace your uniqueness a temporary pause in action it doesn't say that you if you're looking for a partner you're open to the concept of a partner it's not saying you can't have that but maybe change how you're going about it if you're sitting there on the apps flipping and swiping yes swiping no whatever uh, maybe put that down maybe go out and go to a library books can reading go out to an art show of some form go out well it's around getting close to Christmas go out to the local art markets that they're doing for holiday bazaars and things like that do something that's outside of the norm change your view of life your chakra energy is working with the root chakra overcoming fears and obstacles but the four of autumn and number 12 with the awakening which is the hanged man in traditional tarot they're both saying the same thing the way you're doing it right now obviously is not quite working for you so what if you change one aspect of it what if you change one direction one path instead of you know going home and doing the usual thing that you always do Go out to one of something that's, you know, and they're, <laughs> they're being really funny. They're saying, don't make this expensive. Do it cheap. Go out to the free stuff. Go out to the art markets. The, just look around. You don't even have to buy anything. Just look around. Go do some volunteering. Do something like that. Get yourself out of this headspace that you're currently in because it's obviously not doing the best for you. So let's hop on over to overall the um, air singles. It's saying you're ready you're open there's just a, some imbalances that need to be dealt with and part of those imbalances deal with the egos being a little bit too pushy with well it's got to be my way or not eh, maybe not <laughs> so let's look at our air couples and see what they've got going on for November of 2024 and air couples we are oh this is a hard one to see on the screen um, we have number 21 it is the power energy believe that's a ram on there so we're looking at this energy of 
I'm feeling the energy almost like there's a, the word that keeps coming forward is uh, dominance or uh, aggression. So something is really not being balanced right now. The ram also is a sign of Aries. So you've got this fiery energy coming up. So there could be a little bit more passion going on. There could be a little more interplay between um, the dynamic within the household. And they're not saying this is a bad thing. It could just be more of a resetting of the patterns. Like there could have been something that got a little bit out of whack. And this is the time to kind of reset that. And they're not saying it's just about the outside. It could be something from or from the inside. There could be something on the outside that's trying to cause drama or stir up. And that's where the two of you can actually stand up and be like, absolutely not. You keep that over there. We don't need it. <laughs> so you are in the solar plexus chakra. So generally that card or that chakra is very yellow, but this <laughs> card is very red. Uh, the animal is the ram. So this is the energy we're working with. The ram, Misha, is symbolizing the animal nature of the third chakra and its element of fire. Strong, forceful, it is known for stamina and ability to climb lofty crags. It has tremendous strength of will and innate fighting instincts that most prominent when threatened. It carries the seed sound of Rang, which is, I think you can see that, that guy right there, on its back, which is said to promote longevity when hummed. Let's see where keywords are... We have using or developing personal power, influencing others, control, power struggles, manipulation, divorce or conflict in relationships to unresolved power issues. I'm not hearing negative with this one so much as like the divorce aspect that doesn't, that's not applying. It's not what I'm feeling. What I'm feeling with this one is there's been a little bit of a power dynamic struggle. Like one spouse is working 70 hours a week and the other one is like, dude, we have things at home to do. We've got family events coming up, especially with all the holidays. We've got the kids. If you don't have kids, you've got the dogs. You've got each other. It's really saying reset the power dynamic. You work so that you can live life. You don't live life so you can work. Workaholic is a really big thing, and so that <laughs> does occur. And it doesn't matter which, if it's the husband or the wife, they're saying that there's the imbalance is there. And as a couple together, this, or if it's a husband, husband, wife, wife, whatever. I'm not <laughs> not saying that. There is one of the spouses that is over pushing the working thing. And what they're doing is for a good reason, but they're neglecting the home. And that's the part that's the power dynamic I'm hearing is the problem. There's not, at this point, it's more of correct it before it becomes something bigger is what I'm hearing. But they're saying that you've got this passion and this fire together that means you can conquer anything. You can come up against anything. This just needs to be, you know, corrected right now. So if you're the one that's doing the overworking, find a way to reduce that a little bit because it's not really necessary. Un understand the world we live in is <laughs> struggles to, you know, make ends meet at times. But maybe there's a better way or maybe asking for that promotion is a way to deal with that power dynamic at work where you get paid more to close your hours down a little bit but it's just saying they're mo they're really emphasizing the outside factors are the problem here so let's take a peek at your tarot number five is unity do the right thing for the right reasons compare traditional re versus new approaches to see which works a spiritually minded community so unity is how you and your spouse uh, air couples are coming up against the world you are able to do conquer anything when you come together the other part with this is there's a little bit of a mentorship energy that I'm getting. So if you're not quite sure how to go about fixing this, or if you're not quite sure how to, you know, ask for a reduction, like I need to work my 40 hour week, not this, all this extra, because you know, you can't say no because you're a workaholic. <laughs> ask somebody, maybe seek out a parent because normally your parent, one of your parents is exactly the same as the workaholic part. Ask them how they dealt with it and bring that information in and use it like pay attention <laughs> and use it or maybe try a different approach be like okay i can do this and this and this but on these days i'm going to work at home or i'm going to train someone else to take over these days because i you know i need to start spending more time at home however that works but it's the unity of you and your partner that can conquer anything is what i'm hearing 
Your second card is the Prince of Summer, romantic, captivating, dramatic, and flirtatious. Oh, well, this could be fun. <laughs> Falling in love suddenly, being swept off your feet, the need to stay grounded, and during an emotional experience. During this time, things can be a little bit frustrating outside the home. And this is where when you're home and you're in that unity space, it's really a wise decision to be flirtatious. Vent off the work and then leave it. You don't need to drag it around with you. When you're home, you're with your partner. It's time to emphasize those words right up here. The romantic, the flirtatious, the captivating. Take the time when you're, you know, you're at work and things are just kind of, they're getting to you. Pull out your phone, look at a picture of your spouse. A good picture, like one of those ones where you, you kind of caught them unawares, where they're just doing the simplest of tasks, but in your heart and in your mind, that is the most beautiful picture. Um, one of my favorite phrase things is one of my friends keeps a picture of his wife on his phone, and she's in sweats, her hair's up in a messy bun, she's got a kid on her hip, she just looks kind of exhausted, but in to him, she's the most beautiful thing in the world. And it's that, it's that home body aspect. So find the picture, it doesn't matter what the other person thinks, find the picture that means a lot to you and just remind yourself, this is why I do this and this is what's important to me. You have unity and the Prince of Summer. Together you can conquer anything, but don't forget to have the fun, be the flirtatious, be romantic. Bring home your spouse flowers. I don't care what your spouse's gender is, bring home flowers. <laughs> uh, Offer to cook dinner for them, something, you know, in, as an in, interchange, energy exchange type thing, but do things that are flirtatious. Remind yourself what it was in that beginning. Uh, I'm hearing that air, your couple's uh, status is very strong. That unity card really exemplifies how you are in this moment. So you are doing really well, but you got some outside factors that might be causing or leading to uh, a little bit of uncomfortableness, a little bit of frustration, and just the outside world, outside of the relationship, it needs to stay over there where it belongs. It can't be encroaching into the relationship, and that's where having those good, healthy boundaries with work and home are good, and also being open to communication with your partner. You guys are super strong together. That is the one thing they keep emphasizing is air is amazingly strong in this moment as a couple there's not a lot that's going to shake them. This is something that you guys can deal with as a couple, but it's definitely um, remind the outside world that needs to stay out there. <laughs> so with that, I will let you guys go. Have a great rest of your month. If you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, or um, even criticisms, as long as they're respectful, leave them in the comment section down below. Hit that subscribe button if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next video.